Hello everyone! For this week's lore video, I've decided to cover the story of Rhaegar Urfury, who was chosen to be fighting in the Nexus within the game Heroes of the Storm. At some point, I want to cover each and every one of the Warcraft heroes that they've picked for the game, but today we're going to talk about the Orcish Shaman himself. From his youth on Draenor, to the fine pits on Azeroth, all the way to saving the world with the Shamans of the Urven Ring. Ladies and gentlemen, sit back, relax, and I hope you'll enjoy. Rhaegar's story begins on the homeworld of the orcs, namely Draenor. His clan was at war with a band of ogres, and one day they attacked his people, murdered most of them, but Rhaegar's survival instincts were strong. He took the life of one of the ogres long before he was of a normal age for an orc's first rite of passage, so he was very young when he took his first kill. The ogres wondered if they should smash him on the spot, end it here and there, but they decided against it, since he'd be more useful as a training dummy for the younger ogres. The ogres didn't realize what they were getting themselves into though, pitching Rhaegar at much stronger and larger foes, it trained him well and he became such a problem that they decided to sell him to the orcish arenas. His blood price would pay for their losses, and in the arena Rhaegar felt right at home. All his life he had known nothing but fighting, and his warrior skills earned him recognition and a spot amongst the forces of the first orcish invasion of Azeroth. Chosen to be one of the orcs to step through the dark portal to conquer the planets, Rhaegar was right there at the front line, facing off against the alliance of humans, elves and dwarves. As most of you know by now, the alliance of Lordaeron, despite having to take on such skilled fighters as Rhaegar, they were able to defeat the Horde and save their planets. The orcs that surrendered were not executed by the alliance, instead they decided it would be more humane to place them within internment camps. Now most orcs within these camps they became very passive, like an illness was spreading through them, but not someone like Rhaegar. They tried to subjugate him of course, but Rhaegar was simply untamable, up to the point where the guards decided to sell him as a gladiator to fight for the amusement of the human lord Agrovain. Now on the outside, the world didn't stand still. The Dark Portal would eventually be destroyed by the Alliance of Lordaeron, which meant that the orcs were stuck on Azeroth, they had no way home, but it meant very little for Rhaegar. He managed to escape his master and having to fight for the human's amusement, but fighting was all this orc knew in his life. He returned to fight in the underground contest, not to secure a new planet for his people, not for a human master or for the ogres, he simply returned to fight for himself. He gained fame and riches during these contests. The crowd would cheer his name as he earned himself enough money to no longer have to fight as a gladiator himself. Instead, he became a gladiator master, training others to fight for him. One of his gladiators was an orc of the Blackrock clan called Blood Eye Redfist, and as Rhaegar saw Blood Eye fighting with the Booty Bay Bouncers the first time that he met him, he recognized a lot of himself in the orc. A hot-headed troublemaker with a history steeped in war, he saw potential in the orc and he bought him to turn the hothead into a very successful gladiator. Now as Warchief Rall did his own storyline, escaped his own human masters and gladiators life, he reformed the horde and he started to carve out a little piece of the land starting on the red shores of Durotar. Thrall had also begun to revive the ancient orcish ways that were lost on their home planet so long ago as the orcs started to dabble with demonic powers and the demonic influences. Shamanism would become a part of the orcish culture once again, and Rhaegar followed Thrall's leadership, and under his guidance, Rhaegar became a shaman. Within three years, together with his prime gladiator blood eye, Rhaegar earned himself quite a pretty penny, turning his apprentice into an orc's favorite champion, but things took a turn for the worst. Dead Eye was poisoned by the mate of one of the orcs that he had killed in his many battles. They'd come into his chambers, they wanted revenge, and the orc was poisoned. In his final moments, as the poison took his life, he was able to take out his final opponents, but there was nothing they could do to save his life. This is the moment where the story described in the comics actually begins. Rhaegar at this point is down one fighter and his team of Valera Sanguinar and Brawl Bearmantle, they will have to fight within Dire Maul within a month. Fight against other teams with whoever Rhaegar is able to buy in such a short notice. He basically thinks that they're dead meat, but fate has a weird way of working out sometimes and the most unexpected fighter would show up. Now to understand what happens next, you'll need a little bit of backstory about Varian Rin. The Black Dragon Onyxia, she had infiltrated Stormwind under the disguise of Lady Katrana Prestor. She worked on manipulating events, she caused the Stonemason's Guild to ride through the streets, she caused the formation of the Defiance Brotherhood and the death of Varian's wife Tiffin. Her passing made Varian depressed and more vulnerable to Onyxia's manipulations, but his son Anduin, he was a bright light in the darkness, he was able to pull his father out of it, so Onyxia had 
to come up with a new plan. She decided to have Varian kidnapped and use her magic to split him in two beings. She wanted to end up with one strong-willed Varian which she would simply kill off and then she had one weak-willed Varian which could easily manipulate and control events from behind the curtains. Unfortunately for the Black Dragon, Naga attacked as she worked on her spell as she split Varian in two whereas the strong-willed Varian was able to escape, he was able to break out, he jumped into the ocean, he got out of there and the weak-willed Varian would later be ransomed back to Stormwind and used by Onyxia. So here we are, Rhaegar and his party, they're traveling to Orgrimmar and they're in desperate need of a third member for the arena team. On the beach, the orcs spot a human waking up to the mouth of a hungry crocolisk. Bets are quickly placed on the outcome of the fight, but Rhaegar's experienced eyes, they can immediately tell that this human is a very well-trained fighter. Varian managed to put up a real good fight, but it seems like the Crocolis has the upper hand. Rhaegar can't let his new prize become crockbait, so a quick lightning bolt ends the life of the wild beast, but it was unnecessary. Varian had positioned himself in such a way that the beast, with its own weight, it would place a stake through its heart. As they met, Rhaegar asked Varian, who exactly he is, and the human, to his shock and surprise, he doesn't remember anything. This makes it all the easier for Rhaegar to capture Varian, despite the treaty between Horde and Alliance, and force him into his arena team, together with Valera and Brawl. Now throughout the comic, there are a few storylines going on here, like Valera and Varian and Bro, but I'll focus this video on Rhaegar. At first, Varian doesn't even want to fight for Rhaegar. They consider giving him a little bit of a taste of the whip, but Rhaegar is wise enough to know that if they place Varian's back against the wall, Varian will have to fight. His team is pitched against another team to get them some training in. Valera, she brashly enters the fight, and Bro and Varian are forced to join her. As Rhaegar expected, Varian would not let someone die on his watch. They emerge victorious from the fight, they finish their gladiator training and as a reward, Rhaegar has them pick equipment of their choice from the Halls of Legends. As the team arrives at Dire Mall, the crowd can't believe their eyes. Surely such a pink skin can't hold his own against the mightiest in the arena. But Varian, with his leadership and his team, they surprise them all. As they trained, as the story progressed, they grew closer together. They learned how to work together and use their strengths to their advantage. Each victory earned fills Rhaegar's pockets even more until finally Varian and his team they're able to take out the champions of Dire Maul and they claim the title for themselves. Varian has put up such a good fight within the arena that he manages to win the crowd's favor. They cheer his new nickname Logash meaning Ghost Wolf a fitting name for the hero of Dire Maul. With his pockets full of gold, Rhaegar is ready to leave Darmal behind, but before he does, he decides that Valera is not the best person to be in the team, there was a lot of fighting between Bro and Valera, he decides that Valera has to go. He sells Valera to a new team, where she will become the captain, and Bro and Varian, they hate the idea of leaving Valera behind, but such is the life of a slave. Down another team member, Rhaegar sets out to Thunderbluff to meet with Mega for Grim Totem and find a new recruit amongst the Tauren. Now Varian is still trying to gain his memory and although he received flashes from time to time he still doesn't know who he is or what he's supposed to do. Brawl Bear Mental recommends to visit the pools of vision within Thunderbluff so that they could do a cleansing ritual to see if they could find some answers and prevent Varian to be lost in his memories. Megafa warns them that it would be very unwise to go to the caves right now since an elemental has been let loose but Varian and Brawl they're willing to take their chances. While meditating both fighters receive their own visions and Varian finds out that that he has a son, that there are people who need him, so he can no longer stay with Rhaegar. After taking care of the elemental that they be warned about, they're invited to join Rhaegar and Hamu Runtoto for dinner, since Hamu expected that Megafa, that she was actually the one who had summoned the elemental, and now she had to pretend to be happy about it being destroyed. This made the old druid very happy, and as they sit down, Hamu tells them the tale behind Varian's nickname. Logash, also known as Goldrin, is a demigod who was part of the army way back when, 10,000 years ago, during the War of the Ancients. Each culture has their own version when it comes to the Logash storyline, but one thing always stayed the same, his ferocity and will was able to push himself through the boundaries of the afterlife to aid his people. Giving Varian this nickname was actually a compliment of the crowd to compliment his skills as a fighter. I am Varian, but I am also Logash. 
After the tale is done, Hamu gives Varian a feather as a thank you for destroying the elemental, but Bro recognized the feather and the intention behind it immediately. He and Hamu are both druids, and with the feather, Bro is able to summon the aid of a hippogriff, and on his back, he and Varian, they escape their slave master. Rhaegar's guards quickly go after them, but Rhaegar himself, he isn't too worried about his top fighters making an escape. They've earned his investment in them a thousand times over the Dire Maul, and he always knew that this day was coming. A man is truly a prisoner, only as long as he agrees to remain one. After that, in his heart at least, he is free, and where his heart is, his body may follow if his will is strong enough. And I am an old hand, Hamu. I recognize a hippogriff feather when I see one. I know what they can do in the right hands. Rhaegar knew full well what Hamu was planning to do, but his days as a gladiator master were over. We wouldn't see Rhaegar show up in the storyline for quite a bit, and from this moment on, he became more of a side character to the story than really having one for himself. Throughout the comics, Varian discovers who he truly is, and together with Bro and Valera, Valera was able to set herself free in the meantime, together they restore Varian's memories, they uncover Onyxia's plans, and they bring the black dragon down, restoring the two sides of Varian into one single being. In the meantime, Rhaegar realized that he had his fail with the whole gladiator thing. As he saw Bro and Varian escape, he realized that his heart was with them instead of the profit he could make. So he retired and he offered his services to Warchi Vral. Now, the Warchi's advisor, Rhaegar joins Vral and Garrosh as they travel to Fedamore to sit down with Varian, Anduin, Valera, a bunch of others, in an attempt to bring peace to the Alliance and the Hordes. Garrosh strongly disagrees with Vral's choice to this meeting. He believes that he should dominate and take whatever they need. But Anduin, he speaks out, he speaks of wisdom, and he wonders why they would sacrifice lives and resources when a few words could bring them much bigger profits. The peace negotiations, surprisingly, they're actually going very well. For all Varian, they step outside on friendly terms, side by side, but this is Warcraft after all, and Garona half Orkin, together with the Twilight Hammer cult, they attack Ferramore. Garona has been placed under a spell by Cho'Gal, who's working with the old god Cthulhu. They want to bring about the end of the world, they want to interrupt these peace treaties and they want to bring disorder amongst the factions. Brothers of Twilight! The hammer calls to you! In the battle, accusations are thrown back and forth. Varian thinks that the Horde has sent the same assassin that killed his father to kill him. But Vral had nothing to do with this. Garrosh believes that the Alliance have betrayed them, but Valera tells him to open his eyes and realize that there are many different races attacking them. During the battle, Rhaegar, he uses his shamanistic powers to keep Prince Anduin safe. And at the end of the battle, Garona is captured at Fedamore, while her son Madan is taken by the cult. She might have failed at killing Varian, but the human king is pissed. He wants to see justice done to Garona, but justice would have to wait. Jaina is still the ruler of Fedamore, it's her rules, and she decides what happens to Garona. From and Varian with the entourage, they both head home, and the peace treaties between the Alliance and the Horde, they're dead. Back at Orgrimmar, Garrosh is pissed with his war chief, and he's not the only orc that believes that Thrall's actions make him look weak. They end up in the arena as Garrosh challenges Thrall to Makora, but the fight goes undecided since the undead forces they show up to attack their city. This is actually the Wrath of the Lich King pre-event where the undead scourge attacks Stormwind and Orgrimmar. Thrall, Garrosh, Rhaegar, members of the Horde, they unite together and they aim their fury and battle rage at the undead. After they protect their city, Thrall decides to answer the Lich King's taunts, take the battle to Northrend itself, with Garrosh leading the campaign. The Alliance also protects their home, they start their own campaign against the Lich King. Unfortunately, these two factions, they can't work together, but the campaign against the Lich King is well on its way. Just before Thrall is ready to leave, Jaina shows up with a special request. They've been able to crack the magical spells placed on Garona's minds, and they've figured out what Shogal is trying to do, together with the Old Gods. Their best course of action at this point would be to create a new Guardian, which can defend them against Jogal and this threat. And the Guardian is a being, in this case they chose to use Madan, Garona's son, which is granted powers from other people. These powers are combined into one being, but instead of just using arcane magic as they've done in the past, this time they decided to go with magic from different sources. Shamans, priests, paladins, druids, all kinds of different classes, they merge together into a council, merging their powers into the Guardian. Naturally, their first 
first choice that came to mind was to have Thrall stand in the position of Shaman, but Thrall was about to leave the Northrend and he couldn't join the council. Instead he suggested that Rhaegar should join them if he was willing, and Rhaegar he was a Shaman in his own right and a hero on his own, so of course Rhaegar was willing. With their powers combined, with the council backing up Medan, he was able to defeat Shugal and Kafun, he was able to save the day, and with the deed done, he returned the borrowed powers to the council. After these events, the council broke up, each member returning to their own lives and stories, and not a lot of people seem to remember these events, since Medan has not really been mentioned in the game. The only mention was once in Vela's short story, but despite that, despite nobody seeming to remember it, a new council was created, and Rhaegar was part of it. Now there are two more storylines, two more novels, where Rhaegar makes an appearance, but honestly he doesn't do much. First there's the novel Thrall Twilight of the Aspects, which takes place after Thrall made Garrosh the war chief, and Deathwing, by this time he broke out and he caused the cataclysm. Members of the shamanistic group called the Urban Ring, amongst them Rhaegar and Thrall, they're trying to heal the world at the Maelstrom, but Thrall isn't quite there, isn't quite centered. He's the weakest link in the chain of the healing that they're trying to do to the world, and the Urban Ring members they call Thrall out. Thrall tried to explain himself to Moon Earth Fury, one of the members who asked why he wasn't able to do these, these things that they were all capable of doing. Thrall said that he had a lot on his mind, to which Rhaegar said, You have a great deal on your mind? He spat. Well, the rest of us do as well. Trivial things like saving a world from ripping itself apart. Thrall's vision as he was hearing these words turned red for a moment, but before he could speak out, Muln Fury stood up for him. He told Rhaegar that Thrall used to be the leader of the Horde, that Rhaegar had no idea what burdens he bore and perhaps still does bear. As one who until recently owned slaves himself, Rhaegar was in no position to sit and pass moral judgment upon Thrall. Now the rest of the novel focuses on Thrall as he is sent on a mission to help out the Aspects, the events of the expansion the Cataclysm take place, Thrall helps take out down Deathwing, and he comes back no longer as Thrall, as a slave to the Horde, to himself. Instead, he now goes by the name of Goel. Rhaegar welcomes his old friend back and is informed about Thrall's new name, and that's pretty much what Rhaegar did in this novel. Now the final moment where Rhaegar actually did something is in the story During Tides of War, where Garrosh, he is enslaved elementals and he used a mana bomb to bomb Vedamore. News of this reaches the Urban Ring as they're still trying to heal the world. They're devastated and furious that Garrosh had used these dishonorable tactics, had enslaved the very elements that they tried to heal. His actions could undo all the work that we're trying to accomplish, and Rhaegar wondered what else Garrosh might do next. Garrosh and Rhaegar, they never saw eye to eye, even when Rhaegar was still advising Thrall in the role of war chief, and Garrosh was like, we should conquer the world, we should dominate the world. Rhaegar was very much against him. Naturally, after hearing this news, they also wondered if they should go out and confront Garrosh to get involved in the situation, but for the moment, they decided to stay and focus on their mission. To leave now would undo all the hard work, and although Thrall would later on in the storyline leave the Urban Ring for a bit and help out with uh, stopping Jaina from flooding Orgrimmar, this is the final moment that we see Rhaegar in the story. It's hard to say if and when we'll ever see Rhaegar in the story again, since he doesn't even have an in-game model yet. They did give him a role in Heroes of the Storm, so at least he's got that going for him, and who knows, perhaps one day they'll actually give Rhaegar a proper spot in the game itself, we'll see more of the orc who used to be a slave, a gladiator, a slave owner, advisor to Thrall, member of the Council of Tethersfall, and now a member of the Urban Ring. Ladies and gentlemen, with that we've reached the end of Rhaegar's storyline. I wish I could tell you more, but it's entirely up to Blizzard if they'll do more with the character. I do hope that you enjoyed his story so far. On screen I've linked two videos that tightly connect to Rhaegar, so if you want more details or you want more storylines connected to him, on the left we have story of Varian Rin, and on the right we have the story of Valera Sanguinar. As always, thank you very much for watching everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos, and until next time guys, see ya! Born for the arena. On my squad, we trust the spirits for guidance. No one gets left behind. <laughs> Not even a pink skin. And when our backs are to the wall, I call on the elements to even the odds. The names. Rhaegar, heroes of the storm.
Ha 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 